Hi, my name is Deborah L. Welty. I'm a certified teacher of decorative art at Jubilee Junction Art Studio. My website is koalityart.com. I get asked the question, how do I know what kind of brush to pick? Say when I go to a store or to a convention or something. So I thought I would review some of the basic brushes and what the differences are. Oil paints work better with natural bristle brushes. That would include red sable, or there are also combination brushes known as royal sable, which have a little bit of synthetic in them, making them less expensive than the red sable. There are also china bristle brushes that are a natural sable, and many times it's also preferable to use for watercolors, but you can also use synthetics depending on the type of techniques you're wanting to use. Acrylic brushes use synthetic brushes. And the way you tell a difference is you can feel the nylon in these when you touch the bristles and you can feel this is a natural hair. This generally is shinier. It, it, you know, for me, it's hard for me to say because I look at it and I go, well, that's a synthetic brush, but it is a little bit shinier than, than what, and this is a different one. It's not golden, which a lot of times we use a golden tacklon. It's yellower, but it still has a little bit of a shine to it in comparison to the way this one is. It looks like hair. And then these are white, like a hog bristle, or they call them a china bristle. It's important if you're going to go to a craft store to buy a brush that you really look at the brush and you, you think about the quality of the brush. Good brushes are handmade. The, the bristles are put in by hand and, and and the ferrule doesn't wiggle around. So just, just a note of caution to really consider the brushes. I would recommend, unless you really know what you're doing, that you not buy them at a craft store. They probably are not good. It's best if you buy them from an artist or from a, directly from a brush company because the quality of your work will be reflected in the quality of your brush. Now we have different kinds. These, and this is a white nylon brush which is used for watercolors or I use them for fabric painting. The brushes that I have laid here in the middle are called flats. You'll notice the bristles are laying flat. This is called a shader and this one is called a short shader or a bright. And you can see by the length of the bristles that this one's much longer and this one would not really be short. The oils rarely use the uh, shaders, most likely Generally, we use the short shader because of the way that we load the brush and the way that we apply the paint, which I have described in another DVD. Sometimes there are reasons why you would want a short shader in acrylics, and so they have those as well. Acrylic paint is creamier and, and goes on, I call it wetter, but, but oil paint is stiffer. And so when you're loading it up, you are getting a larger quantity of paint, thus needing a longer bristle. This is called an angle brush, and many acrylic painters like to use the angle brush because that way when they are doing their side loading and floating, it's very easy for them to tell which side the paint is on, and that is this I also demonstrate in the other DVD. Another one of my favorite brushes is the Filbert, and as you can see, the bristles are all tapered down rather than them all ending at the same place like they do on the angle or the flat. They are tapered to end at different places and then it's also rounded. You can base coat with this brush. Most often we base coat or block in with the flat brushes, but depending on the look that you want, you can also base coat with a filbert brush. More often I use them to blend and to smooth out what I've already painted to get away make the, the brush strokes go away. Because of this tapering, they work really well for that. You use them in acrylics and you use them in oils. Also in oils or acrylics, I use a brush specifically called a blender. This one is called a filbert. This one is called a blender. It has more tapered bristles as this one does. These bristles, more of them come out to the same length. And I do really, really like these blenders. Another brush that is very commonly used is the mop brush. This one having the br shorter, stiffer bristles will be used a little more similar to the blender because of the way we put it on 
whereas this brush is very very soft and fluffy and when you use it you are just smoothing out the top layer of paint to get rid of your brush strokes. The liner and the round brush are generally our stroke brushes and again I show how to use these in my other video but they they have the longer bristles and to work best the the paint always needs to be moistened with either a medium or water or whichever your whatever me thing you're cleaning your brushes with and then another fun brush to use is the filbert filbert so excuse me deerfoot brush to make fur and textures and a fan brush i was going to talk a little bit about the difference in these uh, China bristle brushes. This brush is very inexpensive. This is a very reasonably priced brush, but this brush has a lot more fullness. It's really a fantastic brush for doing large landscapes and backgrounds. Whereas this one, being small and short like this, it's a lot stiffer and you don't get as smooth of a look. So just choose your brushes carefully um, and use a good quality brush. Use brushes that are recommended by the artist to achieve the same look that they do. They've worked with the brushes, they know how that they're, they're going to do with what they say they'll do. And um, I hope this has been helpful, and if you have questions about other brushes, don't be afraid to ask. Thank you.